road. Uh, okay, lot two, Abbey Road. So the, petition, the petitioner is seeking a dimensional variance uh, in order to construct a house that's located closer to the front property line than permitted as of right. The property is located in the RDB and contains just over 10,000 square feet. The Historical Commission um, did review this and it being a variance, um, they did not take a position. They did not also uh, say that a historic resource uh, was being impacted um, at the time. It's the same vote that they had given um, for the previous ones on, on lot one. Um, so this lot was created through a subdivision approval by the planning board, a land transfer through town meeting, and a development agreement with the select board. Uh, the condition that the applicant go through the ZBA is specifically for front setback encroachment, and it was placed in the development agreement with the select board, not the planning board subdivision approval that the applicant states. The subdivision doesn't typically contemplate size and location of the proposed house, but this is currently under appeal with a building permit. So um, the there has not current there has not been a memo that's been issued from legal related to that appeal. Um, so because of that, I um, my recommendation was to do the same as uh, previously, which is that variances may only be awarded for petitions that fit inside the bounds of um, Mass General Law 48 Section 10 related to variances. And they can only be approved uh, when the SPGA finds that the relief being sought is related to soil topography or the shape of the land or structures involved. And I did not find that there was, um, you know, there was any, um, that the relief for front setback is related to soil topography or shape of uh, such land. Um, so the application I thought therefore did not meet the standards for awarding a variance and I recommended unfavorable action in regards to this petition. Uh, engineering. Um, engineering department received a letter from the applicant this afternoon um, to which we have yet to fully digest and review. However, um, the responses to the comments made in that letter should be the responsibility of the applicant and not the town of engineering, uh, town of Winchester engineering department. Um, other than that, the engineering department has no further comment. So thank you very much. Um, members of the planning board. So currently, which we'll probably be discussing at a later date, there is a appeal with the building permit regarding the building permit. Um, that is different than what is before us right now. Um, if that we are waiting for town council to review that appeal and give us their feedback. Um, so I just want to make sure that we know that what we're talking about right now is the variance and only the variance we have received a lot of um, feedback from abutters regarding um, the various issues regarding that appeal, but we are specifically at this moment only talking about the variance to define if there is a soil shape or topography hardship. Members of the planning board? I think it's quite straightforward. Um, I think there's, that, there's no evidence of that. Members of the other planning board? <laughs> the other planning board. I mean, the other members of the <laughs> planning board? Sorry, except my words. I don't feel like I'm following this conversation very well. Uh, why would we? I don't understand why we would care so much. Like, if they want to be closer to the front, you're saying that there's just specific reasons under and those are the only ones under which we're supposed to approve that? Yeah, that's correct. Brian can elaborate in more depth, but a variance can really only be issued if there's a hardship in the soil shape or topography of the lot. And that's that's only for new lots, you mean? Uh, any variance. No, it's, ahead, it's so yeah. So Mass General Law states that if you're if you're requesting a variance, you can only be, uh, be given that relief based upon 
a, a, something that's different within this lot compared to all the other lots around in this neighborhood. There's something different about this lot that's related to soil topography or shape of the lot. And that's what's causing the need for the very, the need to bring it to the, to the front of this property. It's not the need. We know what the need is. The need is that this went into a, a development agreement with the select board as some type of a concession. Um, so the idea is that it got put in because it, it, it got put into the development agreement, the select board. I'm not going to say why or, or anything. It got put in there. Um, that is the reason why the applicant is here. Uh, they're here because it's a requirement, not because there's something wrong with the soil shape or topography of the lot. I know, so I don't know if Heather, if you, uh, Hannon, if you have any more questions related to that, I, I do think it's important to get to the nitty gritty of this if you want to understand how to vote. So I think it's important that you're asking this. But how would we know if it's a soil issue or not? They're, or a they're topography issue. They're not, well, first of all, they're not claiming it. Uh, they're not claiming there to be any soil topography okay. or pr a, pr a problem. I also am not aware this area of land has been studied more in the past three years than probably any area yeah. of land that has been studied in all of Winchester, no lie. Um, I, I, I think there should be some clarity also discussed that a lot of the issues that um, abutters have have to do with more of the peel and I think the planning board, I know I have voiced my concerns with the change in the site grading from what was approved to what is being applied for. There is a change in there and that changes the, and so um, I, I have questions, but I'm waiting on legal as well, but that isn't what's before us right now. So some of the communication we have received is in regards to that, but that's a different issue that would come before the planning board at a different time. The variance is goes back to the, the criteria for our, if is there a hardship and it so that's where I stand with it um, I, I, I can't see it I, uh, I I unfortunately missed the beginning of your comments um, Brian is it could you tell us what we, we we know that we when we created subdivision we expressly wanted the homes closer to the road to provide relief to the, the neighbors to the rear if a variance is an inappropriate means because it's just not the right one, do they have recourse to some other means of moving it forward? Is that just a special permit looking for I, I mean, relief? I mean, no, it's not a special permit because there's no house there right now. There's a conforming lot. There's clearly the ability and this is the issue. There's clearly an ability to create a conforming house on a conforming lot. So you got to get over that hump to try to do anything else. Now, we, we have just passed what we've called the flexible zoning, and we certainly meant it to be used as to protect historic or natural resources. I'm just, you know, the, the, the planning board really made a decision to try to get those homes closer to the road. And well, so the, the, I, I, I'm sorry, Deb, I have to interrupt because it's really important to say that what you're talking about is, is, a, is the difference between subdivision and special permits and, and well, zoning for that matter and subdivision. This is what the building permit is about. This uh, appeal, I mean, this is what the building permit appeal is about. You're, you're, you're hitting on the legal ramifications of the distinction between subdivision approval and whether or not you can contemplate size and location of houses and whether you can't. We are not going to solve that problem here tonight. And most likely a court is going to have to solve that problem the way things are going. So, you know, I'll stop there, and I'm sorry for interrupting. I think no. it's Brian's got, Brian has, uh, I mean, he's explained the law. It's very clear, and our role is to uphold the laws, and we are asked to just simply consider, does this qualify for variance? I mean, it's a very straightforward question, and it's a very straightforward answer. Oh, I agree with you on that. I, I just want to 
the, I want to see if there's some other route that the applicant can use to get what I believe we all wanted when we approved the subdivision. And I do have questions, which I will ask later about how this differs from say Winning Farm, where we also approved a subdivision and had extremely detailed plans for where the buildings were. It wasn't and a subdivision. I, I mean, it was, it, was, it was never a legal one, but I was on the board and you were not when that was declared and signed and I didn't sign it, but that was not. You were Actually, I was on the board, Maureen. Not, that I, I, it was a mylar. You were not. I promise you weren't. I remember the time when that vote was taken. That, I, that was an overlay district for- um, Oh, okay. Do you want to explain, please? I'm sorry. I meant when the when the okay. So you're right. I meant I was on the board when we approved the um, the bond the winning farm development, which did go through this board. It was an and, arc dot. It was an arc dot. It was uh, an arc dot. Okay. So technically my, not technically not a subdivision. Okay. Right. I apologize. My memory is as ever faulty. It is. Thank you. Is there a motion? I'll move to um, rec to well this is yeah it's a recommendation um, to recommend to the zoning board of appeals that this um, pro project does not meet the criteria of the law uh, to approve it as a subdivision. I mean as a sorry variance. Oh God. Did, should I start over? Did Brian and maybe Nancy that we're recommending to the zoning board of appeals. Uh, to, um, I guess it's denied. Um, well, I'll, um, if you want, um, I have the vote that we took for lot one. If you were, if the idea is to do exactly what we did with lot one in terms of the vote, it was unfavorable, stating that under MGL 40A section 10, variances may only be approved open review of circumstances relating to the soil conditions, shape, or topography of such land or structures and the requested front setback relief cannot be read to be within these bounds and thus is not permissible. Right, well, I'll, so is that a mo can I make a motion to reiterate whatever Brian just read? <laughs> I think we understand your motion. Is there a second? I will second that. There's a second. We are currently, the motion is to recommend um, pretty much unfavorable action in this case, we usually open it up to the applicant. Does the applicant have any interest in commenting or are we all set? I don't see a big discussion. Actually, hold, hold, hold on a sec because I, uh, he can't unmute for a second. Um, Heather, how about declaring time on this? This is not, our, we're I, not the court here. I, I have not heard if he is interested in saying anything. He may not be interested in saying anything. If anything, we're good, then we'll move on and do the vote. All right. I have, this is the applicant, Steve Minel. I have nothing uh, to add. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Cannon, aye. Jurius, aye. Meister, aye. Cheryl? Unmute. Wolf, aye. Von Maring, aye. Motion passes 5 0. Moving on to number 